So then I, two years later, announced, and this was 2000 when I lost my dad, I announced that I was in November opening a committee uh, to begin an exploratory effort to run for president based on my sense of the needs of the country and an urgent uh, set of new priorities. Because of the nature of public life today, the disclosure that goes with that is gigantic. And so I had to, uh, yeah, I went in to get my medical done because I knew I had to release everything to the public so everybody knew I was healthy. And lo and behold, uh, I come back, I have a full range of an annual physical, and I come home, and I've got my PSA, and I have tiny numbers, 2.2 PSA, has gone up to a 2.7, and I didn't think anything about it, as men are most want to do. <laughs> and so I go back home, and my wife asks me how to go, and I showed her the thing, and my wife, who is the daughter of an oncologist and a doctor from Africa, she was raised in Mozambique, is the most inquisitive, most knowledgeable non-doctor I've ever met. <laughs> and she reads everything, knows everything, asks every question, and she took one look at it, and she said, this isn't normal. That tick is too big. You should not have gone up 0.5 in the space of this time. You have to go back to him and have this check. And so, thanks to my wife, I went back to him and I said to him, what's the deal here? And the doctor was said, oh well, you know, we can do a ultrasound, we can check it out and see what the story is, etc. I say, fine, well, let's do what we have to do to check it out. And next thing I know, and I got this much faster than any average American would ever have gotten this appointment, I am in the hospital having this wonderful fun ultrasound <laughs> and in the middle of the process of this discomfort uh, as the doctor sort of and I'm you know, restraining myself he casually says to me by the way you know you can have a clear ultrasound and it doesn't mean you don't have cancer <laughs> at which point I go what am I doing here what am I doing on this table I said are you serious he said yeah so I literally terminated the ultrasound on the spot at that moment. I said, get me somebody in here who can actually give me the knowledge. How do you get the knowledge? And there I'm lying there in my Johnny and the whole deal, and they say to me, Johnny, we should change the name of that. Uh, so I'm, 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 I say, how do we find out? And he says to me, you have to do biopsy. So we get a fellow out of the operating room. He comes in, and patoon, 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 you get your 12 plugs, and I have my biopsy, and I go home. And you're bleeding for a while, and you don't feel good about that and other things. And it's the day before Christmas Eve. I am assembled with my family for what is supposed to be a joyous moment in life and a celebration. Uh, and I get a phone call at four in the afternoon, and the doctor says, I'm sorry to tell you this, but six of the 12 plugs were positive, and you have prostate cancer. Thank you for telling me. Uh, what do I do now? Well, I think it'll be all right. You can do this, here, the da 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 You know, about a five minute conversation, you hang up, and I say, okay, what do I really do now? And I kept it a secret from my family for the next four days because I knew that if I said anything, first of all, Christmas would become this cloudy, horrible event. I also knew that the minute I mentioned the word cancer to my children and to my wife and the family, our relationship was going to change. I knew that how they looked at me was going to change. I knew that every piece of, of so the family unit was going to be different. And so for those few days, I did my research. I went to the internet, I called friends, I called a couple of doctors, notable, most notable among them, uh, Dr. Patrick Walsh at Johns Hopkins, who's world-renowned, 
I got his book from Amazon.com overnight, read it overnight, <laughs> uh, and became a pretty good expert and learned how terrible almost everything I'd been eating for the whole life I had led was for me. Uh, and then began to think about courses of action. Well, of course, I just announced I was going to run for president. And here I am with what either may be a showstopper in terms of treatment or a showstopper in terms of life itself. Because you don't know how far it's spread, whether it's metastasized, where you are. So I quickly made a decision. I made the decision largely based on my dad and that experience. My dad died from prostate cancer. I now had prostate cancer. And I knew just day to day, I, I, I didn't have time in my lifestyle, in my world to be able to do a weight watch. I didn't have time to go through seeds and go out there and say to people, well, I don't know if it's gonna work, but make me president anyway. I didn't have time to be able to uh, uh, do some of the treatments that Mike Milken might have advised in terms of uh, thing, and I didn't want to. The bottom line is I didn't want to because I didn't like the idea that this stuff was inside of me and I wanted to get it out. And I decided to take the, the, the obviously most, they call it radical prostatectomy, uh, and it is radical, uh, and I decided to go in and do that. And, and Pleased with that decision, though, under other circumstances, different people make different decisions about it. The bottom line is that I am now able to stand here in front of you, uh, having had the best health care in the world because I was a United States Senator, having had the best treatment as fast as possible, mostly because I could afford it, and was a United States Senator. And I saw all the disparities, but I also, even as a United States Senator, confronted all of the full range of the confusion and the choices. And yes, I even met Dr. Ego and Dr. Bigger Ego. Uh, so I understand this big time. And here's sort of how I've come out of it. First of all, every six months I now have a PSA test and I am pleased to be able to stand in front of you and say that I am clean, Zero. Thank you.